Now, I'm going to give a little overview and a brief history of the R statistical programming environment. So the very first question, what is R? R is a dialectic of the S language. So, okay, so that leads to another logical question. What is S? So S was a language or in a lang or as, as in fact is a language that was developed by John Chambers when he was in Bell Labs. And it was initiated in 1976 as an internal statistical anal environment, analysis environment. So an environment that people at Bell Labs could use to analyze data. Initially, it was implemented as a series of Fortran libraries to kind of implement routines that were tedious to have to do over and over again. So, they were Fortran libraries to repeat these statistical routines. Early version of the language did not contain functions for statistical modeling. That did not come until roughly version 3 of the language came. So, in 1988, the system was rewritten in the C language and to make it more portable across systems and it began to resemble the system that we have today. So this was version number 3 and there was a seminal book called The Statistical Model in S by John Chamber and Tagore, sometimes referred as the white book. So, and that the document of statistical analysis functionality that came into the version version number four of the s language was developed in 1998 and its version we have what is what we see more or less today so r is an implementation of the s language that was originally developed in bell labs now, oh, so let's let me have a little bit more history here. In 1993, Bell Labs gave a corporation called StatSci, which became Insightful Corporation, an exclusive license to develop and sell the S language. In 2004, Insightful purchased the S language completely from Lucent. So Bell Lab became Lucent Technologies for 2 million US dollars and they became the current owner. In 2006, Alcatel purchased Lucent Technologies and it is called Alcatel Lucent. So now it is Nokia. So Insightful developed a product which was implementation of the S language under the product name S Plus and they built a number of fancy features into it. For example, graphical user interface and all kinds of nice tools that's why this language is called s plus and they built a number of fancy features on it you know so in 2008 the inside food corporation was acquired a company called tipco for 25 million us dollar and that's more or less where it stands tipco still developed develops s plus although in a variety of different types of business analytic type product and it continues till this date. So you can see the history of the language a little bit tortured because of various corporate acquisition but still survives this day. The basic fundamental of this language have not really changed since 1988 and the language that existed in 1998 looks like more or less what we have today. And it's worth to know that in 1998, the S language won the Association of Repeating Machinery Software System Award. And this is considered as a very prestigious honor. Now, what is S philosophy? Since, okay, so since uh, John Chamber developed this language, and uh, he's the original creator of this language. And it's very important, I think, to see this is what it is basically. They wanted to create, this is what he has to say. 
They wanted to create an interactive environment where you didn't have to think of themselves as a programmer. Then he says that the needs became clearer and their sophistication increased. They should be able to slide gradually into programming. When the language and system aspects would become more important, so the basic idea behind the S language and then later the R language is that people would enter the language in an environment, in an interactive environment, where they could use the language, the environment without knowing any sort of programming or having to know very detailed aspect of the language. So they could use the environment to look at data and do basic analysis. And then when the environment, when they kind of outgrew their environment, then they can get into programming. They could get into learning the language aspect and learning to develop their own tools. And the system would, you know, very kind, very kind of, would promote the kind of transitions from user to programmer so that the basic philosophy and so this is the basic philosophy of the S language so that's enough about S let's get back to R so basically R is relatively recent development in 1991 it was created in New Zealand by two gentlemen named Ross and Robert so they talked about their experience developing R in a white paper, which is published in 1996 in the Journal of Computation and Graphic Statistics. In 1993, the first announcement of R was made to public. Martin Mittler convinced Ross and Robert to use to license R under GNU. And we'll talk about it a little bit a little about it later and so this made R as a free software. In 1996 a mailing list was created. This mailing list was consist of R help and R dev. R dev. One called R help which is a general mailing list for questions and R devil which is more specific mailing list for people who are doing development work in R. In 1997, what is called the R Core Software Group was formed. And this contained a lot of same people from the S Plus who developed S Plus and the core group. Basically controls the source code of R. So this so primary called source code of R. It can only can only be modified by the member of R core group. However, a number of people who are not in the core group have suggested changes to R and they have been accepted by the core group. So some of the features of R, the first one, which was important back in old days, when people were when people were still using S plus but the syntax is very similar to S, which made it S plus user to switch over. This feature isn't quite so relevant today where most people generally